Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for April the 3rd, 2024. April the 3rd, 2024. Well, you know, I've got great news, everyone. You know, I'm also on YouTube. And now follow me on TikTok. Uh, the Daily Recaps are there now as well. For TikTok, I will be breaking them up because, you know, there's that 10-minute limit. So I'll break it up part uh, one and part two so you can get all of the daily recap uh, recaps, uh, the, my TikTok daily recappers. Anyway, let's dive right in. Eh, today was a very boring day, y'all. <sighs> Slow, boring Christina. <laughs> Poor Christina. She goes to see none other than Nina. See Christina's buddy. Her nose in. You're going to go to your father's should be ex-wife. The only reason she's not his ex-wife is she's refusing to sign the divorce papers at this point, right? But you're going to take it upon yourself to go there and tell her, you know, I just got to say what you did to Carly and, and uh, Nina was, um, Carly and Drew was wrong. But, see, but. My father was very happy with you. Want to know how hypocritical that is for Christina? Sonny was happy with every woman he's been with. Sonny was very happy with Carly. The six times he was married to her. So see, for her to come, and so I'm rooting for you. How are you rooting for them when you're definitely team dad? 100%. Team dad doesn't want anybody to even say Nina's name. So following Christina plain suit, anything or anybody that her father does not. So to the form, says daddy don't like her, Christina shouldn't like her. Right. But no, no, Nina, they're using Christina as the catalyst. That's how Ava, I mean, Nina's going to find out Ava and Sonny are sleeping together. Watch. Christina is going to tell her to go over and she's going to catch them. Good. I like that. So Christina's getting ready to leave or, you know, getting ready to walk closer to the door. And Ava's so happy she stopped by to see her. And Maxie comes in all excited. Nina, Nina, I want to introduce you. And Maxie walks past Christina. Blaze doesn't even look Christina's way, like sees Christina out of her peripheral, looking straight at Nina. I want to introduce you to the new face of deception. Blaze, she signed on and blah, blah, blah. And she's still looking straight ahead. And Christina's standing there like, Close enough to say, hey, wait, we this close. I, you can smell my perfume. And you're not even going to turn your head and acknowledge me? And so Nina, she goes, you're the first person that we're telling, you know, about Blaze. And Nina says, well, I better be. She goes, Crimson is the first. You know, Nina goes, I better be because it's Crimson, of course. Right? And so she goes, welcome, Blaze. Welcome. So she goes, um... I want to, do you know Christina? She goes, I remember you from the island when Sonny and I got married. Do you remember Christina? And Blaze kind of half turns her head to Christina. Yeah, I remember Christina. And then looks back at Nina. And Christina kind of looks at the side of Blaze's face. And she's kind of like, oh, you know, she almost mouths. Wow. Oh, you remember Christina? We were just in the bed together this morning. And you, rem oh, Christina was just like, oh, see, here we go again. Here we go again. So Christina looks at her and says, yes, Blaze, face of deception. I see it. And she walks out. See, yeah. Blaze promised she would never ever do that to Christina in public again. 
Just reduce her to nothing. See, here's the thing. You don't have to flaunt your relationship, but you still have general courtesies. General, yes, of course I know Christina. You know? Or when she walked through the door, she could have even said, hi, Christina. I want you to hear this great news too. That doesn't say you in a relationship with Christina. See, Blaze hasn't learned. And Christina is really, watch, going to put her foot down with that. So Christina was leaving there and she was going to um, go and see Dante after she pretty much got slapped in the face by the woman she cares about. And she's just kind of like trying to process it. Hmm. Okay. So she goes and she sees Dante and she's talking to Dante. And she Dante's like, so what's going on with you, Chrissy? Uh, Chrissy? Something's up, I could tell. And she was just saying, no, I'm, I'm worried about dad. And she goes, don't you think, and she was telling Nina, that it's just odd that Ava's there. And Christina's like, no, I mean, Ava's like, no, 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 it's fine. You know, Sonny's taking, you know, Ava and Avery security thing, it's fine. And Christina's just like, hmm, still kind of odd. So she tells Michael, she says, Michael, don't you, not Michael, Dante, don't you think it's odd that Ava is still living with dad? And Dante looked at her and he goes, well, quite frankly, yeah, I do think it's still odd that she's there. But you know what? Dad's not alone. At least he's not alone. He has someone to talk to, even if it's Ava, right? And Christina's like, I don't know. I just, I just don't, I, that's just, I don't know if I like that, right? Because see, she didn't tell Dante she wants Nina back with, with uh, Sonny. So she ends up leaving because Sam comes, but she was getting ready to leave anyway. And Sam comes in, she's talking to Dante. And then uh, the nurse comes in, believe it or no, 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 no. Chase and Brooklyn go to see Dante. So I think maybe they come. Uh, and then Christina leaves. And they ask Dante, would he be their, uh, would Chase ask him, would he be his best, his groomsman? Because Finn is his best man. Will you be my groomsman? Right? And Don and, and Dante says he would be, be honored, absolutely honored to be, you know, the groomsman. So yeah, and I'm thinking, okay, of course, because we only been shot twice in the chest, boom, boom, and hey, wedding's win in three weeks. Oh man, absolutely. I'll be dancing on the floor, right? So anyway, um, they're happy about that. And then Sam comes in and they're they're leaving. But before Chase and Brooklyn got there, Gregory, oh, he kind of ripped them. Or they were actually headed to Finn's office. Gregory is already there telling Finn off because Gregory had a visit with his doctor. Liz was prepping him and Gregory politely told her that you're the head of nurses. And you're doing something that any first year nursing student can do with getting my vitals. You have more important things to do than this. And she's like, oh, no, nope, there's nothing more important than taking care of the people I care for. He goes, Elizabeth, no. I want some dignity and I want some privacy. He says, you are seeing my son, Finn. I um, I see you in a personal family setting. I want the settings to be separate. My health is my health. If I want to share it with you, my sons, but well, guess what? Elizabeth would know anyway. She could see charts. She's head nurse. She would check over patients' records, the way her, her nurses are charting things, quite frankly. She has more of a right to see Gregory's chart than Finn does. Finn is an infectious control doctor. So therefore he would not have Gregory's chart. But Elizabeth is the head nurse at the nurse's state. She would see it, right? So anyway, she goes, you know what, Gregory? You're right. That is not a problem. 
and thank you for telling me this. Because she's thinking, look, it ain't nothing but a thing. You're right. I, I, you're right. This is something my nurses could do. I do have other things I could do, right? So um, she goes and she talks to Finn about how they're going to need to step back from, from Gregory. You know, let him give him his dignity, give him his independence. He's already living with you guys, you and you and Violet. So let's, you know, and she told him what he said to her. And Finn said, I, you know, okay. But Finn already had called the doctor saying after Gregory's appointment, hey, what can I, how's my father? And the doctor politely told him, doctor, patient, confidentiality, because Gregory told his doctor, I want to make this clear. My medical condition is not to be discussed with anyone, not my sons, anyone. And the doctor said, okay, you know, doctor, patient, confident, I will absolutely honor your wishes, right? Because Finn would go to all of Gregory's appointment. He had said that. He had told Elizabeth, um, and actually he told Chase that and when him and Brooklyn came up there that, you know, now we just won't know until dad tells us because what happened was, I guess the doctor then called Gregory and told him Finn asked about him, but maybe Gregory was still in the room with the doctor. See, we don't know, right? And Gregory heard the doctor talking to Finn, but he came in. He said, you called doctor, who cares? Name, I don't remember the doctor's name. And you asked him about my appointment. He said, don't you ever do that again. And Finn is just looking at him and Elizabeth's there. And he goes, my medical information is private. It is mine. If it's something I choose to share with you, I will share it. But it will be my choice. Don't circumvent me again. And he walks out. And Finn looks at Elizabeth and he goes, okay, you're right. Uh, I do have to step back. <laughs> you know, woo. And then Brooklyn and Chase came in and, and he goes, hey, how'd dad's appointment go? See, and he goes, I don't know. And dad let me have it in, in no uncertain terms. I cannot call his doctor to get uh, uh, updates on him. It is up to him to tell us. And so Chase is like, well, okay, I hope he does. <laughs> you know, and he goes, he'll tell us what he wants to know. Okay. So that was, was that. And then Gregory's a little flustered. And uh, because before the appointment, he was talking to Tracy and actually they had a really cute, I see those two. I want to know when are they going to change the Gregory dying storyline? When are they going to come up with the disease that's not going to kill him? Because he and Tracy are getting so close. And Tracy even told him, you ain't too bad to look at. <laughs> and it, it kind of perked up his little, like, even in this picture, he's, ew, he's like, oh, okay. He's saying I'm handsome. Really, that's what that was. I kind of gave that old man a kick, you know? So they were talking and, you know, she always encourages it. She always encourages him. You know, I really like this side of Tracy because of Gregory. Um, and I'm hoping that they kind of put them together more than Gregory and Alexis. I, I do. I think Tracy, I don't know. I just like Tracy and Gregory better. So anyway, then Elizabeth comes and gets Gregory and that's when he goes into the room. But they just had a really nice exchange. Uh, Tracy, her physical, her annual physical is getting ready to start in a few hours. She was getting some blood work, prep work done, but she wanted a break. So she goes to the coffee place where they kind of have the little table in this back room there. I forget the name of that one. Is that the Cherie? I think that one's the Cherie. Um, and Stella's there and she goes, um, can I sit down or, or Miss Henry or Stella? Can I sit down? And Stella's like, it all depends, <laughs> you know? And, and she goes, Stella's looking at the issue of crimson. And so she goes, you know, I'm uh, having my physical. I just did my blood work and I came for a quick break before the physical. 
And so uh, Stella says, me too. I just felt I needed some coffee that didn't come from the ca hospital cafeteria. And so she's looking at Crimson and, and um, Tracy says something about the magazine. And Stella's like, look, nobody rep. She goes trying to get new ideas, new, uh, you know, fashion ideas. And Stella's like, there's nobody in here that represents me, <laughs> you know. And Tracy goes, can I sit down? And she goes, sure. So Tracy sits down and she was just talking about Crimson. They're probably getting more ideas because remember, I always said they need to do faces of deception. They need all ages, races, the whole nine yards for, for that. It should not just be one face of deception. It should be faces of deception. So she and uh, Stella were talking and then Tracy kind of talked about a friend she has and, you know, how much that friend me means to her and, you know, you have to talk to them in a certain way. And, and Stella gave her some really good advice, you know, and to me, I was like, wow, I think that is the first female friendship or beginnings of a female friendship that Tracy has ever had. So Daily Recap fans, I want you to think, has Tracy Quartermain ever had any female friends? Because she and Stella even made a date to play backgammon because you know Tracy loves her some backgammon, right? And the only person that can beat her really good in backgammon is Gregory. So let's see if they're going to kind of put them, you know, her and Stella, just more as friends talking. I, I like that. I could definitely, definitely see that, right? Uh, so then we have, I'm almost done. I think I've almost covered everything except for the fact that uh, Maxie stays and Maxie talks to Nina. And Nina is talking about, oh, she wants to send a congratulation card to Sonny. And Maxie says, wait, no, no, no. About what? Well, about the baby. Because Christina's now showing, look, they're giving her a little fake baby bump now. And so she told Nina and everything. And she goes, because Sonny is going to be a, a that's going to be his great nephew. So he's going to be a great uncle. I could send him a congratulation card. And, and Maxie's like, no. Molly and TJ, yes you can send a congratulation. But Sonny, no, Nina, you look desperate. I don't look, she goes, yes, you do look desperate because you are desperate. And Nina looked at her and she goes, I am not, I just, I, you know, what, I, just because I don't want my marriage to fail? She goes, no, you're desperate to get Sonny back. And it shows, Nina. She goes, and what I don't understand is the Nina that I know was never desperate after a man. And when you think about it, she was not desperate after Valentine. She wasn't conniving, scheming, trying to figure out how to get him. She just fell in love with Valentine and Valentine fell in love with her. She, uh, and I thought about it and I thought, okay, I see that. But with Sonny, it was this whole obsession with getting whatever Carly had. Because after Valentine deceived her, she found out about the Sasha deception. She then, now we're going on this whole Carly thing. And then, oh, she and Jax got together. Because see, Jax was an ex of Carly's. Even though there was no Nina Carly feud back then, but they were laying the groundwork for that, right? Because Nell was still alive back then. And it was the Nell Carly feud. So anyway, Max is just telling her, no, you're doing desperate things. And I actually like you better. The Nina, the Nina from before I like much better than the Nina now. So we'll see, but Nina never takes anything to heart. She never does. She's not going to. So that's the daily recap for uh, Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2024. Let's go to Comment Corner. Comment Corner. Some good comments here. I kind of chuckled a bit because 
<laughs> One of the common exchanges, and when I read, get to it, you'll you'll know because I'm gonna start laughing again. I was saying, okay, now, 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 folks, come on, kids, come on. It's just like you know how kids in a family just start bickering. <laughs> The silliest little argument, right? Anyway, that was me. Silliest little argument. But anyway, okay, let's go. Lisa, Lisa says, um, you are the one that makes us tune into your channel every day. We enjoy listening to you. It makes me smile each time. Thank you for taking the time to do this for us. You're welcome, Lisa. And then she also says, I still think Ava has been switching Sun's, Sunny's medications out. Valentine has not been uh, messing with his meds, but he said they were going to start. Sonny is already spiraling like he's off his meds. And then P. Merle says, would Ava go there again? She paid a high price for tampering with Morgan's meds. I'm not sure she'd risk that karma again. I know, P. Merle. I don't think she is. Uh, but then again, I don't know. These new writers might be twisting us up, right? They might go ahead and give us some different things. Um, and then Lisa also says, I don't know why Blaze just changed her mind uh, about being the face of deception. She didn't want it before. Now she has changed her mind. Anna has, uh, Anna must have coached Dex very well for his interview, explaining his loyalties and reasons for leaving the military and Sonny's employment. Willow is very loyal to Michael and his family. I love it. Yuck, Nina and Drew, a couple, they deserve each other. I'm glad Drew and Carly split up. We can lie. She can lie to him now. <laughs> Carly will lie to you in a heartbeat. Curtis is being stupid, wanting to wait. Then tell he could stand. I know that made no sense. No, he is scared. He's trying so hard not to disappoint everyone, including himself. That's what P. Merle said to Lisa. And then, oh, Lisa, you get a lot of comments today. Uh, you know what, Lisa? I read, I read enough of you. <laughs> I only got 10 minutes. I'm gonna skip right on down here to Richard. Another great recap, daily recap lady. I wonder if those charges against Carly are real or made up by Agent Cates to use Jason to do his dirty work. You know, I thought about that too. I would think Diane would be able to look into it. I'm wondering. Because see, then you might find out there are no charges. Kate's is that kind. He he would definitely lie about something like that. And then P. Merle says, maybe the fans are uh, tired of him coming back as a different character. Must be talking about Roger Hayworth. Um, who was Austin, who was Franco, who was, he played three parts. He even played Todd on, on General Hospital. Um, he'll, wait, he'll always be a serial killer to me. No, because he wasn't the original Franco. Fra the original Franco was a serial killer. He was great on... Uh, one Life to Live, General Hospital never gave him a good storyline. No, they did not. They never did. Um, Patty Ever After says, I think that's uh, what's being left out of the Dex Sunny convo is the amount of loyalty Dex showed despite all, despite, despite it all for Sunny to constantly throw him aside at the slightest sneeze. As far as I'm concerned, Sonny never gave Dex the Jason loyalty treatment, um, and the man has been shot twice for him. P. Merle says, and he also agreed to help him uh, to help him down for a price, to take him down for a price. Yeah. Uh, if Sonny can't forgive his own son, why would he forgive Dex? That is true. And Brenda says, Nina doesn't know Jason or Sonny either. She just wants to start. I can't stand Nina and Drew. Um, it might backfire on Nina. She's going uh, to print something. Oh yeah, she's actually going to print something in that magazine. Claire says, I most definitely believe there will be a Nina and Drew hookup. Absolutely. They're going to do that. 
Nina uh, just wants to stick it to Carly, not realizing Ava wants to hook up with Sonny. Oh, because Nina did tell Maxie, I've got an ace in the hole. Somebody on the inside. I thought she was talking about Christina. She was talking about Ava. <laughs> Maxie looked at her and said, Ava Jerome? Ava Jerome does nothing for anyone else. She does stuff for herself only. And Nina wasn't hearing it. And I thought, see, that's letting you know it's going to crash her dead in her face. I'm going to love that, right? Um, I can't see Dex being a cop. This is still uh, Claire. He's, he's in an emotional state, not realizing what he's signing up for. He will have a target on his head, uh, just not by Sonny, but the other mob bosses as well. That's what I said. That's a, a lose-lose situation. I can't believe Anna would suggest something as stupid as that. Brenda says, even so, it's really nobody's business that Jason, uh, that Jason, how can Carly get into that much trouble? Is John after payback because Sonny wouldn't care now? The cop is right. You can make, you have to make up your mind. Okay, Brent, I think you were talking about different things, but yeah, we don't know if those charges are real. And then Liberty said, let me know when Roger Hayworth comes back. He's so talented. I'm waiting for him to sign up with any soap so I can start watching uh, again. G.H. Blewett, I.M.O. I don't know what I.M.O. means. Um, and then Nicole says, in all caps, I might add, he's never coming back. Get over it. <laughs> and then Liberty comes back to Nicole. There's no need to be rude. And you spelled over wrong. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. And I said, oh, no, stop it. Stop that fighting. That's what I said when I read it. <laughs> I'm not going to get over it. I'm going to keep bringing his name up, hoping that some soap would sign him. And you know what? Liberty, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive, right? <laughs> um, and Lashanta says, I knew Jason's protecting Carly. But everyone forgets he was running and working with Carly. So why throw her under the bus? I don't like how a Anna threw under the bus, what, threw him under the bus. I don't like making Jason a target. I don't like that at all. He's low down. So when Sonny was playing for Farmer Joe, Carly got caught up. Uh, Sonny, Sonny's not nothing. So all he goes back to IF. I mean, I'm NF. I don't know what that is. Um, not only did Sonny betray his family, they risked their lives, and he felt his family. Uh, he left his family for the snake. Shaking my head. I really don't care about Kirsch, uh, Curtis and Portia. Me either. Dex is the dead man walking. I don't care about Dex. I mean, Drew or Nina, me either. Drew's going to do something stupid and mess up everything. Cute scene with Carly and her family. Nina can't stop uh, being petty for five minutes. She needs to worry about Valentine and Ava. Uh, you mean Sunny and Ava? I don't understand if Anna wanted Dex in, why the interview and the attitude? Yeah, they're going to make Dex a cop, but that's a stupid thing. Tom says, Carly is the queen of Port Charles. She can ever, never do any wrong. If she does do something wrong, someone will always bail her out. Yep, yeah, that's true. That's so true, Tom. She deserves it, though. She deserves bailing out. She deserved Drew to say, no, I will go to jail for you. I will. Happily, she deserved Jason to say, I will be a mercenary for you happily. <laughs> P. Merle says, oh, stop hating. Carly has shown lots of growth over the years. Complain about the fact that Heather might be let on the loose on the world again. You are so right. We got worse women to worry about than Carly. 
And then Nicole says, Nicole, you used a swear word. Too bad. Uh-uh. Let's see, I can't even say it. Carly deserves to get away with everything, good or bad, that she does. I'm always there. Wait. I'm glad there is always someone ready to bail her out. <laughs> I'm with you, Nicole. Just not with what the word you used in that comment, but I'm with you. Sammy says, uh, crazy thing, that scene with Drew and Nina had way more chemistry than Nina and Sonny ever had. I know. With Sonny, Nina was so used to this deception and so used to, see, Mike only saw this perfect glimpse of a woman, which is what Nina wanted him to see. So when Sonny knew he was Sonny, Nina still had to pretend to be this virtuous person, to be this good person. Well, with Valentine, Nina can be Nina. Drew knows the low down, dirty Nina. She doesn't have to be anybody else. So that's why you saw more chemistry. She could say what was on her heart and her mind and feel justified doing it, right? Justified doing it. So that's why we have the chemistry. And then last comment from Anita says, regarding Curtis, at Stella was great. I like how they are scripting Stella. Me too. She's a wonderful actress, especially when she was a wellness counsel for Mike. I know a few years ago. Well, Stella is a seasoned primetime actress. And she's been in some good movies. Stella's, you know, Stella's too good for daytime, but she's doing it because look, she still needs to get pay the bills, right? Lisa says, exactly. I do love Aunt Stella these days. She's very considerate of other people, um, of the people she counsels, helping through things when they need guidance. She is a good actress. Yes, she is. All right, everybody. That is it for comments and comment corner. Great comments. I mean, you guys are definitely talking to each other like you talking about your favorite soap. And we all have differences of opinion. I love it. I will be back tomorrow with another daily recap of General Hospital.